In this video, we'll be going over how to convert between the equilibrium constant K and the standard Gibbs free energy change delta G standard. To do that, we use the equation delta G standard equals negative RT times L in the K. So delta G standard is the standard change of Gibbs free energy, which typically is given in kilojoules per mole. R is this a constant, it's 8.3145 joules per mole times degrees Kelvin. So we have a little bit of a discrepancy here already. This delta G typically is in kilojoules, but R is in joules. So we just have to make sure we convert both delta G and R into kilojoules or both delta G and, and R into joules. T is the temperature and that must be in degrees Kelvin. And then K is the equilibrium constant, which is unitless. Let's take a look at the first problem. This problem reads the equilibrium constant for a given reaction K is equal to 3.96 times 10 to the negative 9 at 35 degrees Celsius, and we have to solve for the delta G of this reaction. So we can just use this equation, delta G goes negative RT times L into K. Delta G standard equals negative R, negative R is this 8.3145 joules per mole times degrees Kelvin. The temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, so to get that degrees Kelvin, we just take degrees Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. 308 degrees Kelvin, put that into here, times ln natural log of 3.96 times 10 to the negative 9 power. So we could just enter this into your calculator and we'll get 47936.5. Not worrying about sig fix right now, just put, putting down the number 52 joules per mole. The, the Kelvins will cancel each other out and K is unitless, so we'll left with joules per mole. Now, if we want to report our answer in kilojoules per mole, all we have to do is just divide this by a thousand and we'll get 47, how many sig figs should we have? We should have three sig figs, 47.9 kilojoules per mole. So let's check if that makes sense. Our K value is less than one. It's very, very small, less than one. That means that this reaction is reactant favored. And so we expect our delta G to be positive, and it is positive. Now let's take a look at a problem where we go in the opposite direction, where we're given the delta G and then we have to solve for K. In this problem, we're given the balanced chemical reaction, and we're told that the standard delta G for this reaction is 22.7 kilojoules per mole. And then we're asked, what's the value of the equilibrium constant? So we're given the delta G, kilojoules per mole equals negative R. Notice that the delta G is in kilojoules, our R is in joules, so I'll just divide this by 1,000 to convert the R into kilojoules. That divided by 1,000 is 0 0.0083145 kilojoules per mole times degrees Kelvin. The temperature, it's not given here, so if the temperature is not given, you're just going to assume it's 25 degrees Celsius. You, you can add 273 to that to get 298 degrees Kelvin times ln of K. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take the 22.7 and then we're going to divide it by that times that times that. So just divide it by negative, negative 0.0083145 times 298 and that equals ln of K. Then to get rid of the ln, we take e to the power we we take e to the power of both sides so it'll be e raised to this number equals k so when you're doing this in the calculator you might just you might want to put a parentheses around this entire thing and that comes out to be 0 0.0001 or we can also report this in scientific notation, which will be 1.05 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, negative 4 power. And that, let's just check if that makes sense. Delta G is positive, which means this reaction favors the, the reactants. It means this reaction is not spontaneous and favors the reactants. And our equilibrium constant is less than 1, which means that we have more reactants than products at equilibrium. So this is, this is all checking out. So you can, to convert between delta G and K, just use this equation, delta G equals negative RT L into K. The most important thing is just to make sure that delta G and R are either both in joules or both in kilojoules. 
if you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.